Hey guys, I'm Chris. Hey everybody, I'm Robert. And we're the Film Flamers, bringing you the loved ones late because of the Texas ice apocalypse. That's right. And um, But as promised, we are here to talk about it, but this might be a little bit shorter of an episode. Yeah, originally we had planned to do a deep dive, but um, in the interest of brevity, as well as we're on a little bit of a fence here of whether this movie deserves a deep dive, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely something we would recommend to watch, especially for February. But of course, by the time you listen to this, it's going to be deep into March. So <laughs> for any of you stragglers, here it is. So The Loved Ones is a 2009 Australian horror film written and directed by Sean Byrne, who also directed 2015's The Devil's Candy, which I haven't seen, but I hear is pretty good. It stars Xavier Samuel, Robin McLevy, Victoria Thane, Jessica McNamee, or McNamee? How would you say that? Probably that second one. Jessica McNamee, Richard Wilson, and John Brumpton. It follows a teenager who finds himself at the center of a female classmate's demented party after he declines her offer to attend a school dance. The Loved Ones is Byrne's first feature film and was originally given a rating of 18 plus in Australia, but through an appeal by the review board, the rating was successfully dropped to an MA 15 plus rating due to the comedic aspect of the film, mitigating both the sadistic qualities and the impact of the violence, which that's debatable. Ah, yeah. I don't think that any of those comedic aspects diminish any part of the sadistic qualities of this movie. Uh Uh, Score is composed by Australian experimental musician, Ollie Olsen, and the soundtrack features songs by Australian pop artists like Cosmic Psychos, Sophie Coy, Little River Band, and of course, Casey Chambers. Am I not pretty enough? <laughs> That's the only lyric to that song that I know. <laughs> Is my heart so- Am I too outspoken? Yeah. Anyway, I like that song. <laughs> yeah. It's totally something that I would have listened to like when I was a teenager. Or now. Who the fuck am I kidding? Are you kidding me? So in lieu of our normal synopsis, we're just going to jump right in shall we yeah the loved ones screened at several film festivals including tiff on september 13th 2009 in america it was first screened at the afi fest on october 31st 2009 and it made appearances at the 2010 dallas international film festival that's right and the 2010 south by southwest festival it was officially released in australia on november 4th 2010 the first DVD copies entered the U.S. market in November of 2009, but the film did have a very limited theatrical release in June of 2012, where it played in Austin, Chicago, Houston, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. Man, Texas was all over the loved ones, wasn't it? It earned a little more than $350,000 at the box office against a budget of $4 million. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure that's great. Um, however, like I think I saw this back in... At least 2010. It was uh, it was before 2011 when I saw it. I remember wanting to see it, and it just slipped through the cracks for some reason. And I know that you had seen it because you had told me, but um, yeah, I don't know why. So this was the first time that I watched this movie for the for the podcast. Well, I mean, it does have a 98 percent on Rotten Tomatoes and mm-hmm. is certified fresh. It holds an audience score of 73 percent, so a little bit lower. But the site's consensus reads. Successfully mixing the conventions of the teen and horror genres with a twist, Australian director Sean Byrne makes a striking directorial debut with The Loved Ones. Striking, like a slap in the face. (laughs) Callum Marsh of Slant Magazine wrote, Sean Byrne endows his rote slasher material with the kind of blackly comedic wit and levity that virtually guarantee its entry into the contemporary midnight movie canon. David Brown of Empire said, Growing pains have never been more excruciating. The Loved Ones is an instant horror classic. I don't know that a good review of a movie should use the word excruciating. I think it's a little <laughs> misleading. So, I mean. Well, you know, the way I've always viewed this film, um, at least in this past decade, has been that it was a latecomer kind of to that slash pack or splat pack kind of groupings of like hostile and saw yeah. and stuff like that. And it was trying to do some shock gore here. Um, that's not quite as good. It certainly doesn't go quite as far as, you know, visually as, um, you know, some of those uh, like human centipede. But I think with this one, a lot of it's a little bit more visceral in the moment because they're not just on, you know, some of the extras and stuff. Yeah. And I don't know how I feel about, I mean, obviously, I, I I enjoy those movies, right? Like, I like Hostel. I really like 
like torture porn. You know what I mean? Like I, I like Saw. You know what I mean? Like I, I like violence and gore. You know, and so I liked the that parts of the movie. If the stuff, if if it was only that, you know what I mean? I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. But we'll talk about where this movie deviates and why I don't really care for it. Yeah. I, well. You know, I do think that it does make people squirm. I certainly showed it to some people and, and they squirmed. You know, there there might be a drill and some, you know, liquid, hot, boiling liquid poured into the hole and things like that going yeah. on here. And I feel like the comedy in that doesn't really, you know, those moments aren't comedic at all. Really. Not Yeah, I wasn't laughing watching. In fact, I don't know why they say this movie is comedic at all because I don't remember laughing once watching this movie really Mm -hmm. i thought it was a little funny most of the funny i think is on the shoulders of the main actress here which is the person that essentially kidnaps this boy into her own little private prom night Mm -hmm. yeah with her father who there may or may not be some weird relationship issues with (laughs) may or may not i think it's pretty fucking obvious yeah there's there's some cringeworthy moments here uh, but speaking of that lead actress, uh, there were some accolades for the loved ones. The Fangoria Chainsaw Awards nominated Robin McLevy for Best Actress, and it was also nominated for Best Makeup. I can see that. At the Fright Meter Awards, it was nominated for Best Horror Movie, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Actress for McLevy, and Best Supporting Actor for John Brumpton, and the Best Ensemble Cast. That's quite a bit. But it didn't win any of those, right? I will say that the, the two leads in this movie, or at least... Uh, you know the the daughter and the father were good. They I mean they excellently done. They really played crazy pretty fucking well. Yeah. So there's a little bit of like so what to this movie. I feel like if it was there might be like a missing act here or there there could have been a little bit more play up to what this ha- like it, it feels almost incomplete, right? But the core of the movie is very good, which is those you know, prom scenes and the reveal scenes where she has kidnapped the boy, the father actually kidnapped the boy for her. And we kind of get glimpses into her life. And it's just so deliciously crazy and weird that it's fun to watch. And it's sometimes comedic, but it does get to a really, really dark, nasty, cringy place in multiple aspects. Yeah. You know, I would still definitely recommend people watch this film just for like a nice Valentine's Day or even really a, what is it, Galentine's Day <laughs> type of watch. I mean, and the rest of the cast in this movie really aren't all that stellar, right? Like uh, Xavier Samuels, who plays the the tortured love interest, right? He does I'm, good. He just does his job fine. I mean, he doesn't have much to do except for like writhe in pain yeah. for most of the movie, right? And then like be the, a little emo kid at the beginning. Right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, when he's like, you know, <clears throat> running off to climb that mountain and <laughs> cutting his hand with his trusty razor blade. And I'm like, I was like, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you cutting your hand and then trying to climb a rock? And then I realized that he was having a moment, you know? And so I'm like, okay. I thought his girlfriend did a good job. Yeah, she played worried really well, right? And I kind of like the relationship that she had with his mom throughout the movie. Like she was she was present and active during the whole time that he was missing. And yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess we see that a lot from teenagers in horror movies, right? When their boyfriends or girlfriends are in danger. But yeah, she did a good job. So I mean, but it really is kind of a small cast, you know? It, yeah, there was no bad acting. It's just it serves serviceable. Yeah. But definitely the obviously the performances that were, you know, stand out were the father and the girl. And they're meant to be, yeah. right? I mean, like that's the that's the point of this. Those movie. are the media roles. Right. You know, everyone wants to be princess and everyone wants to be daddy or whatever. Yeah. So and I have to say it was well filmed. I loved all the interior shots of that little prom and stuff. And there were like slow reveals that were kind of epic and stuff where she like slowly leans into the camera mm-hmm. and you see that her, was in her prom get up and yeah. there's like lights going and everything's in pink and she's just crazy. And yeah. But I mean, you're right. It does get cringy and it gets cringy like early in the movie too. So like there's a scene where, the boy, he's already been kidnapped and they're getting ready for their own prom and he surprises her with a dress and shoes that he bought, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like watching her try it on and shit. And I was just like, where is this movie going? And there was a little bit of tension there with like whether he'd be watching her like get naked or yeah. something. Like you can tell like almost she is so jealous of anything. Like she's willing to go that extra step with her father just to get more attention from because apparently her father has like a zombie 
you know, a zombie wife or mother or whatever too, that has been drilled in the head. Yeah. You know? So, okay. so we have to, we have to go back a little bit and explain what they're doing here, I guess. So when, when they start their, their prom and she she leans into that frame and we realize the scope of what's happened, right? Like the boy's kidnapped, he's tied to the chair and they start to share that chicken dinner. Right. And then they keep calling that woman bright eyes. And I was like, who the fuck is this lady? I was just yeah. like, you know, I wanted some backstory like immediately. And I know like be patient with films because they'll explain later on. And they do, you know, sort of yeah. with her, but, but then like the shit really hits the fan and it starts to get very uncomfortable and very violent like yeah. pretty quickly. And we realize that he is not the first person kidnapped, right? Obviously they had done this, or at least the father had done that to his love interest. Who's, you know, a zombie at the table, a part of the family, I guess, in some weird way. But under the house is, you know, something else. And we we have found that there's been previous, like, you know, four, five, six, I don't know however many prom dates that she has had or boyfriends dating back to like elementary school. Yeah. That she has worked with to torture these people or make them into her little zombie pets you know, since she was a child, you know, um, you know, I think that the father is a sociopath and did all this and started this, but she just like took it and ran with it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, like father, like daughter really is like a good way to sum up the point of this movie. Right. Like, I, I don't know if, if he started this because he had some issues of his own or if he learned early on that she had a, you know, a prevalence to, to torture and murder or something he really just wanted to encourage like some would encourage a good soccer player you know <laughs> he's like hey or you know let me show you how to use the drill or whatever but um well she gets excited when he actually manages to escape when he escapes up a tree and she's just it's the time of her life throwing rocks up at him <laughs> knocking him down she's like laughing and giggling and yeah. <clears throat> I mean, she really views them as like a, a play toy, right? Mm-hmm. And something that she's going to keep forever. It's very, it's very Dahmer, right? And uh, it does make me wonder what would have happened if he had said yes to her when she asked him in school. You know, would they have actually gone to the real prom and would she have made a little bit of a crazy of herself in public or we should have carried that prom right down to the ground would he have just gone to her house to pick her up and they would have just done it then, you know? I, either same, way, same result. He was going to to die or yeah. become a lobotomized zombie right yeah. down in that cellar with the other ones and i kind of like the fact that they made them look old like they've been down there for a long time yep. obviously aging right and just insane from what's happened to them and where they're being kept and being fed ridiculously weird looking roadkill okay what the hell animal yeah. is that do you know he runs over something and they- i thought it was a possum no, it didn't look. Like, I thought it was like a wombat or whatever they have, and I don't know. I mean, like, <laughs> no offense to people in Australia, but y'all got some weird fucking animals down there. And well, so, it was like, a baby kangaroo. I don't, don't fucking know. <laughs> it, it looked really bizarre. I was like, what the fuck, animals? <laughs> I just have no idea. I know we have listeners, so y'all, if you've seen the loved ones, tell us what animal he ran over and if it's a common problem. Yeah, but this is it's such a date night movie because there are those moments where. You know, the more squeamish will like instantly grab someone next to them and like start squeezing your arm. Like there's like that drill moment and the hot water moment. And there's like a nail in the feet moment. And there's all kinds of moments like that where it just puts you right on edge. And they do kind of skirt the line between too much and and not enough. You know, I think erring on the side of too much. (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, if you're going to have a movie that's violent like that and that's going to be like its claim to fame, I mean, you want to like sort of push the boundaries. The the thing is that I've seen so many movies that are considered to be extra violent, right? And so sometimes things don't shock me as much. But when there are certain parts of the body that I do not like to see things happen to, (laughs) and one of them is the feet. Yeah. Like, I just don't like it. I don't like it when things go through the foot. I don't like it when Achilles tendons are cut and things. I just don't. Oh, yeah. Like in uh, Pet Cemetery. Yes. It just bothers the shit out of me. And I don't know why. And I'm ready for Resident Evil. Fuck. I mean, like, I just don't. I mean, eyeballs and feet. I just don't like it when things happen. I don't like bone crunching. Right. And so there's like a, like an ankle bone crunching moment. And oh, it's like evil. Yeah. Oh, you're right. This is the sound of it. Like, I don't like it. Well, and the sound when he's drilling and where she's drilling. Oh, the 
head. sound design of them drilling into people's skulls was just <laughs> nausea inducing. Yeah. Gut wrenchingly gross. I was just like, oh, that's awful. If it sounds too realistic, then yeah, that's where I sort of like draw the line. So, I mean, the drilling into the head thing is, is not that bad, but once I have to hear it, you know, it's like going to the dentist. I don't like to hear my own teeth being drilled. Yeah. Fuck all that. Also, the terror, like, was this actually horror, right? Like, uh, were you scared during these scenes or just was it just really tense and gross? Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't scared. I was more stressed out than I was. Yeah. I was very concerned for the character and it seemed like there were multiple times that he was going to escape and he was like foiled every time. Right. And so I was just like, okay. So it had some intense moments, but um, I really enjoyed the ending of the movie. A lot. Actually, I did laugh at that, as I recall. Oh, yeah. When they're having that, like, cat fight in the car and then on the road. And he comes up in the cop car and, like, runs her over. And then, like, they're having this warm embrace and they get in the car to escape. And they look in the rearview mirror and she's, like, crawling on the road toward them. I was just like, this bitch. (laughs) Well, I liked when when she was driving to come save him or whatever. And all of a sudden, it's just her... (laughs) The girl's scrapbook full of these like crazy valentines just hit the the hood of the car, the windshield. I, I wanted them to actually just, and this is my second watch of this movie, and I, I just wanted it to be like, I wanted them to dial up the comedy there. I wanted them to go back and hit her again in reverse, you know, like faster or something. And I don't know. I mean, yeah, so... There's obviously some there was so much potential there for for more comedy. I I completely agree. And I mean, so there's also parts of this movie that I think don't belong at all. And I mean, like, I know it's there for some sort of explanation character wise, but I don't think it's really needed. So the scenes with his friend taking that girl to the prom and them getting drunk in the car and then going in and, you know, getting reprimanded for being too risque, you know? Yeah. I'm like, and all all that just serves to show that, you know, Lola had taken her brother. That was the one that he swerved to miss that killed his father at the beginning of the movie, yeah. right? So, I mean, it just didn't need any It was a weird that. connective tissue that really didn't need to be there. I would have rather had, like, more fleshed out, either way more fleshed out and involved in the main storyline, mm-hmm. where maybe she had, the sister actually had something to say or something to do with the the main villain, but she never got that moment, so it almost didn't matter, you know? Right. So, I mean, she obviously is hurting because her brother is dead. The whole family is hurting. Yeah. But, I mean, and then her father is killed later on in the movie, too. And so, like, there's never really any sort of, like, reconciliation for the audience watching it. She's just, we're supposed to assume that she's forever sad, you know? And I'm like, I don't like that. I think that people need to have some sort of comeuppance. Yeah, exactly. Like, the audience gets the comeuppance kind of but she doesn't they don't really right. know that he was there you know and any kind of realization of that isn't in the movie mm-hmm. so it's just like um it's on the the page for the audience but it's not on the page for the characters and i think that was a mistake but kind of in hindsight because i still feel like the film is enjoyable i still feel like i would recommend it for people that do like shock horror you know, especially something for like Valentine's Day or prom or something. I think it's a, it's original enough and those performances are good enough to recommend it. And that's why we're even recording this. Yeah. And I think that we chose the right month to talk about it, you know, originally in February. So um, I do want to mention one thing because I saw it on Wikipedia and I had to look it up and get a little further information. Apparently, there was a murder in Australia that is very similar to the treatment that this guy received at the hands of Lola, right? So this man... Uh, After the movie? After the movie. Oh, I think I heard about this. Yeah, so this guy um, killed one of his best friends, right? So he beat him, he stabbed him 49 times, and this also included a wound that was carved into his stomach that he later poured salt into. And they found a creamy substance that was thought to be a cleaning fluid found in his eye. So during the trial, it came to light that this man um, was sort of obsessed with witchcraft and horror movies. And one of his favorite horror movies was The Loved Ones. So during this trial, the judge or the prosecutors had the jury watch some of these torture and murder scenes to compare it to what, you know, this man had done. And the judge pretty much said, like, you know, you're too heavily influenced by these horror movies and you seem to enjoy like the torture and the pain that you inflicted on this man. Right. Cause he was claiming that he was too much of an alcoholic to have any sort of control over his life and his actions. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I stand firmly that 
watching horror movies does not make you a bad person. You know what I mean? It does not make you violent. No, but right? it might, you know, hurt people, violent people that are already hurt and violent. Yeah. Um, it might give them ideas. It's true, you know? And so, but I, I don't know. I don't, I just don't like it when people start throwing things out there like, oh, you like horror movies. So you must be like a mean or violent person, or you must want to kill people and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? I've never heard that. Really? Oh God. I hear that all the time. And like video games and shit like that too. They well, I hear that. Way. I hear people, society or media or conservatives blaming certain movies or, you know, I remember doom, the video game quake, um, and possibly uh, the Matrix, obviously, being blamed for Columbine, right? And I always thought that was bullshit. Uh, Marilyn Manson was blamed. Like, come on, right? And so that type of thing. But I, I, as far as like a general societal knee jerk that people who like horror movies are violent in general, I think that's... I've never experienced that, I guess. Yeah, I mean... It's like, always after the fact. Oh, this person liked horror movies and they killed a bunch of people, so that's why, you know? Yeah. I just thought it was particularly interesting since he literally did everything, you know, from that movie. Right. So except for uh, the main thing I would say would be like the drilling of the skulls and stuff. Yeah. And maybe he just didn't get far enough before the guy died or something like because that. Because I believe they took that from Dahmer. Yeah, Dahmer used to do that and pour acid into people's skulls. Yeah. She was yeah. just pouring hot boiling water. So at least it wasn't acid. He poured acid to make his zombies. So God, I know way too much about serial killers. So, <laughs> nice. Out of five stars, Chris, what would you rate the loved ones? Oh my gosh, what did I rate it? That is an excellent question because I've also forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gave it a three. I gave it a three and a half, um, mostly because. I I like violent movies, and so I really enjoyed some of those scenes, right? And so I thought that it was good. It was inventive the yeah. way that the villain was inventive, and I I thought that was good. So I I gave it three and a half stars. Yeah, to me it's a high three because it's so many scenes from it are memorable. That song I will never get out of my head. <laughs> Am I not pretty enough? <laughs> is my heart too broken i just made that up i don't know if that's the word or not yeah so i mean in the of course the drilling scenes and some of the scenes with the mother or the the father and the daughter and and the highway scene at the end there's so many memorable scenes and moments in this movie just kind of packaged in a lot of you know extra stuff that's not that's kind of mediocre you yeah know, but there's there are moments in this movie that are truly great you know and so there's a there's moments of a five-star movie in here but overall the package i would say to me is a high three i mean, I would certainly watch it again right i'm probably not going to run out and do it right away yeah but like you say i mean around you know february valentine's day it's something that i would pop on and watch yeah you know certainly not with my husband this is not a movie for him no so. no for you squeamish folk this is uh we wish just at the beginning of the movie <laughs> <laughs> or the beginning of the episode um for you squeamish people this probably isn't the best thing if you're not if you're not okay with gore at least okay with it you know and it's probably good that we didn't have a synopsis and we're treating this as sort of a shorter deep dive because um i would have written the synopsis with the blow by blow of what happened to that guy and maybe some people just don't want to hear that i was thinking i can't really classify it as gore you know especially after seeing day of the dead no that's gore that's right? gore this, this would be violence, violence. Yeah. yeah yeah because you don't see much this is what you hear and the idea of it yeah <laughs> As always, if you've seen The Loved Ones, let us know what you thought about the movie and our conversation about it. You can find us on social media at The Film Flamers on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Or you can email us at tiredqueens at filmflamers.com or call our hotline at 972-666-7733. That's right. Also, head over to patreon.com slash thefilmflamers and sign up and join the family over there. You can get access to episodes like this one, sometimes days early, weeks early, and um, get all of our bonus content. This month we're covering Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And we just released Pride and Prejudice flashback over there a couple days ago. So enjoy that and uh, check out Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. That's right. And join us next week when we will be covering more zombie fun and talking day of the dead and after day of the dead we'll be talking resident evil all the bunker zombies all of them well chris bring the hammer am i not pretty enough <laughs> are you going to make me pretty <laughs> daddy <laughs> this you'll be my first drilling 
<laughs> that's way more than that. Okay. Uh, I want to get drilled. <laughs> I was going to say for gay people, that has a completely different context. Yeah. He got nailed and drilled. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Lucky bastard. It's a feminist movie. That's right. <clears throat> okay, everybody. Until next time. Sweet dreams. Now I can just think about getting drilled. <laughs> <laughs>